back to Life in the Valley, the podcast, Valley Community Church. Today I'm here, Jason Soderstrom, Matt Olson, I'm Paul Ice, and as we began each one of our podcasts, Life in the Valley is the practical um, Christian living. We want to ask questions, we want to dig into some of the topics that are relevant in our life, and this last week... We are in Matthew 5. We've been kind of progressively going through Matthew 5. And uh, this week we're in Matthew 5.13. Matthew 5.13 says, You are the salt of the earth. And we're going to dig in um, today. But before we dig in, it's uh, for us, it's a Tuesday. And how are you guys doing? Doing wonderful. Yeah? It's, uh, I'm I don't feel like I got my clothes out ready to embrace the cold yes. that is coming in. I walked so. out in a t-shirt today, and I'm going to live with it. You had so. your gloves on, though. But I had my gloves <laughs> and my scarf. If I've got my gloves and my scarf. I, um, I got my big, uh, from Costco, my big uh, container of hand warmers for yep. skiing. So I'm ready it. for ski season. Keystone's open. That's definitely... Definitely. So, but you don't ski, Paul. So, no, I you don't. should. You come watch me. Though. I go. You can't live in Colorado and not ski. It's just not well, right. You know, I'm one of those sacrificial dads. <laughs> take my kids up, and I sit in the clubhouse. Jill and I go snowshoeing, though. Do you guys go snowshoeing? Jill um, and I do no, snowshoeing. No, snow so the kids ski, and we go snowshoe. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's a lot more work than what you guys are doing. I mean, you just take gravity down the. I mean, I'm climbing. <laughs> I'm doing real work. So it's a need for speed, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, our discussion, we transitioned in Matthew 5 uh, uh, this last week, and this we're transitioning to making a difference in this world. And so kind of in this passage, now we're going to go into salt and light and some additional teachings of Jesus. So kind of maybe jump into it here. Um, why the question making a difference in the world? Let's start there. Um, why that topic? And why should it be a concern of us to make a difference? Well, the reason we're studying this is because it's what's next. It flows mm-hmm. right out of, you know, Jesus is saying the first 12 verses here, this is who you are, but now this is the effect. And I think deep down in every one of us, we want to make a difference. We want to make a difference in our culture, in our families, in our relationships. And, uh, and God created us to make a difference. So it, it has... Tremendous significance, I think, for every person. And I love that about following Jesus is that he does give us a greater purpose. I think a lot of people, when they think of just coming to Christ, they think it's a, like, I don't go to hell anymore. But that Jesus has commissioned and he's given us the purpose that he had. And we get to join in an eternal purpose to to fill that need and void that we have. Well, and that's created in the image of God, right? In in our DNA is we do want to make a difference. And so this is Jesus saying, this is how you make a difference. And this is what making a difference looks like. Right. Yep. And so part of it is just image of God. And that's what we do. I was having a conversation with my son, Noah. I don't know if he watches the podcast, so let's hope not this week. Probably but... not. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just yesterday we were talking about college and some of the stuff he's making decisions on for next year. And one of the things of money, you know, came up and he said, well, one of the goals is to make money. And, and I said, yeah, and make a difference. Right. And he says, well, with a lot of money, you can make a lot of difference, (laughs) you know? (laughs) And I think in practical Christian living, we're always looking for what are the ways to make a difference. And I think that's the great thing that Jesus is going to be like, but being a follower, you do make a difference. And what's crazy is the that Jesus and his 12 disciples, they literally turned the world upside down. I, I say Jesus is the greatest leader of all time because he had the most followers and he's had the most influence. But Jesus left this world with not a penny to his name. And so I think that is even a, a difference that God empowers us through a supernatural power to have a difference that we could have a greater difference. Mm-hmm. influence even without any financial backing yeah. well because if i was to ask you this question and ask the average person what are the things that you need to make a difference like what would be on the top five list to make a difference mm-hmm. you know you ask a teenage kid well if i had money that would help yeah. me make a difference like what else does the average person think like if i'm going to make a difference in the world here's the things i think i need Lots of followers on Instagram, yeah, like yeah. A, a message, a message that's worth 
saying. I'm trying to think of other ones. Uh, popularity, like yeah. if, if I'm someone that's respected or I have power or popularity, like those are the people, you know, that they well, that's, would say. That's what I love about this sermon and about this message that Jesus gives us is he gives us the blueprint that we don't need any of that. Well, I think to the simplicity of it, because yeah. the, the greatest the greatest difference maker in all of human history is Jesus. And he says, follow me. And that that's... Uh, not easy it's not easy to follow him but it is incredibly simple and so the beatitudes is not a list we've talked about this is not a list of go do these things and you'll make a difference but because you're following me yes. these will be the characteristics of your life this will this will be how others when and seeing you will describe you and then when we get to verse 13 is this is the effect yep the effect is you are salt and so this week we'll get into, he says, you are the salt of the earth. But at the end of your message, you put this out there. The scripture says, what good is salt if it's lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. So maybe let's jump off that. Uh, you said this phrase, salt doesn't lose its composition, right? But we can corrupt it. And you kind of were, and in this passage, it just clearly says, and when that happens, they throw it in the street, it gets trampled on. Right. So how can we corrupt, uh, you are the salt of the earth, and Jesus addresses it here. How do we corrupt it? Yeah, I think just maybe to back up a little bit on that, of what it doesn't mean. Yeah. Because okay. when, when people read that, you're thinking if, if you've lost your saltiness, you're good for nothing trampled on the on the road does not mean that you lose your salvation it yes. doesn't mean that i no longer have a relationship with christ but i've lost my ability to make a difference okay and i am salt but i become useless and the way that that happens is it is true that salt is a constant compound we have a little salt here <laughs> and uh it is a constant compound so it's not gonna cease being salt but if you mix it with other things then it loses its ability to be useful and it's good for nothing once it once it's been corrupted then it's good for nothing and people would throw it on the road because it wouldn't hurt any crops or anything else throw it on the road it gets trampled underneath and we have a tendency to corrupt the simple following of jesus with adding our own ways of making a difference and that that's really the problem that he's addressing is, and would you say, is this why Christianity often loses its effect in the community it's in, whether that's in your local community, across the United States, across the world, is not because you aren't the salt of the world, but because you start to lose, as he says, your saltiness because you've added things to it or you've taken away from what the following of Jesus yeah, is. The, because the gospel... Romans 1, the gospel is the power. It's the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes in it. And we see throughout the early church that the gospel spread like wildfire. And it, it wasn't on the backs of the most popular people. It wasn't on the backs of lots of money. The reason it spread is because it was the power of God. It was a supernatural power. And so when Jesus enters into us, we become a new creation and we are a supernatural power. We are the salt of the earth and we have the power that is inside of us. But again, I would agree. I would say when we allow that power to be corrupted by other things, maybe even other things that we think are good, that's where it loses the power. And you walk through the, there are the four target groups that were, were there and that how they had, had taken little pieces and were wanting to corrupt the power that is of God. Yeah, right. and so the easiest way we corrupt is we add things to the gospel. Yeah. Like, you know, because we want people to not only have it inside, we want them to have it outside. Like, well, you got to look the part too, right? Obviously, the Pharisees do that, did that, but we do it too, right? Well, yeah, we, we get frustrated when someone, they come to church and they curse. We yeah. get all angry. Why are we angry with them? Well, you need to... Mold, get in this mold now god will change you but that's not the goal that's not and and we could push back on that and we lose our we lose that saltiness that we had 
to those people. I, I see it all the time in yeah. life is that we try yeah. to add, I mean, the Pharisees are great at it, but we try to have our morality, our checklist morality. And if you match all these things, then you're good. Mm-hmm. And you try to control behavior, <laughs> you know? So I think it, we get, we focus on the external and it's not that the external doesn't matter. This yeah. is our, our yep. physical right. representation. So we would agree with that, but but that doesn't tell you, when you look at me, it doesn't tell you what's going on inside. Right. And if I'm just trying to help a person correct behavior, uh, that really doesn't make them right within. I mean, a perfect example of that in your message, you said, we uh, wear the same clothes, we go to the same schools, we work the same jobs in those places where salt. And right away I thought, okay, the people that are heavy on the rules are like, we don't wear the same clothes. Like, you mean you wear all the same clothes as people that don't follow, you know, Jesus? And like, or people like, well, I don't go to the same schools. Like, I'm trying to pull my kids out of those schools, you know? Uh, and because that's, that's a corrupt area. I mean, it's just, it's the bent of if, if I said we wear the same things and the first thing you think is, well, not all the same things. That's probably an area that you're, you know, you're bent to. One of the people in my small group we were discussing this said, well, my struggle is I can't stand the rules and I fight against the rules, you know, and you talked about that was kind of one of the audience, but he's like in church, in society, just in general, if you say this is what Jesus looks like and the disciplines and the Beatitudes, what it looks like, my first inclination is I don't need all those rules and that can happen, right? Yeah, and, and I think, too, just to, to clarify that, that God cares about everything. Yeah. So how, how you dress and what you eat and where you send your kids to school does matter. But uh, you got, it's, it's not that you do that without discernment. Uh, but uh, that is not the answer for this world because we could, we could correct a lot of external things. I put them mm-hmm. in these schools. I wear these clothes. I listen to this music. I read these books. But it still hasn't transformed the inside and Jesus is just he's going to a very uncomfortable place with these people right to the heart Mm -hmm. and and that's difficult for them and I I've had some friends we talked about just me as a young parent I'm trying to learn how to parent I'm asking them give me your advice and they go they're on the back end their their kids are in college or graduated and they go you know we kind of bought into we're gonna follow every single Christian rule and we're gonna follow every guideline on how to raise our kids and you know what it didn't work and it's almost like when you buy into, instead of following Jesus, following this plan or this checklist, mm-hmm. and you get your hope in that, it can disappoint too when our hope is it should be in Jesus, not in yeah. the external. Yeah, and your, your goal is not to produce a moral kid. I mean, you hope that they have yeah. morality with them, but you want them to love God and follow Jesus. And, and when that happens, all the other things will fall into place. Well, and sometimes it can actually be... Uh, the least effective because you mentioned one of the audience groups is like, we're going to change the political agenda of a culture. And there are people that think America would be better off if it was a, a more moral society. And so let's, you know, do what we can politically to get a moral agenda. And you made the phrase, if we're all morally better, does it move anybody closer to Jesus? Yeah. The, and the answer is without heart change, no. Yeah. Right? You know, if, if we could uh, take your political position and wave a wand and make everybody in America to believe like you do about politics, would we be better off? <laughs> well, eternally, no. Because people on their way to hell are Republicans and Democrats and Libertarians. So what they need is Jesus. And, mm-hmm. and if we lose sight of that, Uh, I'm not saying politics are unimportant because we do champion things that help our society. But but at the end of the day, if a person doesn't have Jesus, they don't have anything. If they have Jesus, they have everything. That's the point that he's making. And who are we trusting and what are we believing in? Right. What what we trust and what we believe in as followers of Christ is that Jesus Christ is God. And he is king and we are to follow after him. And so what what was his method of change? I mean, the disciples, even at this time, they were planning on him to take back Israel. Overthrow some stuff, right? It was a a political battle. They were in a political battle, but Jesus doesn't go the politics route because he knows that it will not go back to the heart. It will not change the heart. So he's after the heart, not their politics. So then 
uh, what does salt look like? I mean, what yeah. does when he says you are the salt of the earth? What does that mean? Uh, what what does a salty <laughs> Christian? Okay, so I just saying that makes me laugh because my son uses that word. Dad, you're getting a little salty. I think it's lost its meaning and so now you know if there's a new version of the bible come it might not be so that means you're anymore. a smart mouth <laughs> exactly so he <laughs> says Dad. I, I looked that up because I, th- I thought that's not we don't want to be salty christians because that'd be a smart mouth christian <laughs> yeah Noah's like you're getting a little salty over there so okay yes. but in in uh scriptural terms what does uh a christian uh, a salty christian look like um and what does it practically look like well, if you, if you went to, you, you can jump in here, but yeah. if you walk into a, an office and you look around and you see people, they, they, they probably look like everybody else. But the difference would be what we've read the first number of verses, that there's humility and there's, uh, there's kindness and there's grace in their lives. There's uh, righteousness that they, they show. It's, it's a lot of what scripture talks about, the fruit of the spirit of God, the evidences of living like Jesus. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, you, your salt in that place. Yeah, I've seen it practically play out in my life by just not even what I've done, but how I receive it. So for me personally, like when I go through hard times or I'm struggling, there's there's like three or four people on my speed dial that I'm going to call. Mm-hmm. You two are on that speed dial. And why do I call you? Because you are so different than the advice and the friends I have that are not followers of Jesus. So it, it tastes good. I want to, yeah. you, you bring life to me. And so I feel like in, even in my own life that I see it play out by people that actually care about my life. And so a salt, a salt of the earth, Christian mm-hmm. follower of Jesus is someone that you just are drawn to that you're like, they're just, they're just different. And that's, again, that's what advanced the kingdom at the first century was they were different than everyone else. And people were drawn to that. And my question to me always is, am I different? Yeah. Am I do when I walk into a room of non followers of Jesus, do people look at me and go, "He's different"? There's mm-hmm. something different about that guy. Well, so often Jesus talked about how he was life, like true life comes through him, and you know this is a practical thing, salt. You know, and he they were very familiar with the qualities of salt, and one of them you mis- mentioned is it brings life. You know, and I think. A Christian, a follower of Jesus, is always bringing life to wherever they are. Mm-hmm. You know, and you mentioned that's actually one of the qualities of salt. But life is because you have hope and you have possibility. And you even mentioned, you know, the salt's preservative effect. It has eternal life. You know, and there's a difference between, you know, bringing a little energy to the room. Or an eternal quality that Jesus was talking about. This is everlasting, right. eternal hope yeah. that you have. Hope that will carry beyond today. Yeah. Everything about your life is better. I mean, and it's because you have that eternal perspective and you're walking with Jesus. And I, I think that when people see it uh, most clearly is when things don't go well. Mm-hmm. When, when something happens really bad. We don't respond like other people because of that eternal perspective and that we're walking with Jesus. And so it does have an effect at your job and your home, your marriage, it, it, uh, with relationships you have extended family, it, you know, you're on the basketball court, the golf course, uh, you know, this, this is where our lives are salt and it's by abiding with Jesus, walking with him, keeping in step with him. And we're making a difference with that life. And I would say as well as not allowing the corruption to go in, yes. that the whole New Testament, mm-hmm. that this is why we need to be so familiar with the word. Jesus was the word and we need to yeah. know the word because where corruption comes in is when we try to add to it. You know, at the yeah. end of Revelation, it says don't add to the word. But in the whole early church, they were trying to distinguish, don't add anything to this message. This is because it was a total transformation from the old covenant to the new covenant. Yes. Right. And we can't add, we stick to the gospel, we stick right. to what Jesus says, and we follow him. Mm-hmm. And we don't get in the weeds of all the, well, I should do it this way, this way. No, we follow Jesus, and we just trust him and do what yeah. he says. In our discussion this week in our small group about it, someone mentioned about that, like, you know, it's in the path of what you're doing. You are the salt of the earth, not like try to be the salt of the earth, or here's a list of things to be the salt of the earth. Like, you just are the salt of the earth when you're a follower of Jesus. 
but they were commenting about that, like, you know, with salt. And it says some watered, some plant, but God gives the increase. And the importance of understanding, because they're like, that's this was the illustration they give. You, I'm the salt of the earth. I'm going to give you the salt of Jesus and just like dump, dump it, it on you. you. And like, wait a second, God's the one that does the work in the heart. And in your salt that you are, some water, some plant, you don't got to dump your salt. That's what the person in the small group, you don't got to dump your entire salt on person the first time. It is relational and it is pointing people to Jesus in the path. You don't have to go get a new job to be salt of the earth. You know, your family doesn't have to move somewhere else to be the salt of the earth. Be the salt of the earth today where you are in your job on the basketball court yeah. wherever you well, are and we were talking it's the idea of your speech paul tells timothy yeah. have your your speech seasoned with salt yes and seasoning with salt is using it at a good amount have you ever <laughs> right. been cooking and made like something right. and actually dumped a whole deal of salt in and just ruins it same yeah. thing it's we gotta we gotta know how to season with salt there's discretion mm-hmm. and that's that's why we have the the holy spirit that lives inside of us i mean it says multiple times in the scriptures that when we do not know the words to say, that the Holy Spirit will tell us what we need to say. How we can we just got to realize we need the Spirit to help us season everything with salt. Yeah. And so with Jesus, it looked like serving. Um, being the salt of the earth looked like serving. He went to the poor. Um, he called the children to come to him. I mean, his impact around him was wherever he was at. If he's at a funeral, he's the, you know... He's the salt of the earth in that, you know, in every place he was, there was no group that Jesus was not going to be the salt of the earth to. And he was, and people loved him. Yeah. Like the crowd, why were there crowds of sinners, of prostitutes, of tax collectors? Because he, this is in Matthew five. The rest of Matthew is him just showing what it looks like to be the salt of the earth by loving the people that are quote unlovable to being just the man he was. It's amazing. Uh, it does seem, seem overwhelming to make a difference, but it's very simple. And I think that you come back to this idea that Jesus isn't saying, if you do these eight things, yep. you will be salt. But he, he's saying, if you keep in step with me, if you follow yep. me every day, and he gives us his word, he gives us his spirit dwelling in us, and the possible possibility of prayer, so that if I... I just do one thing each day is keep in step with Jesus. I will make a difference in this world and for eternity. And for eternity. All right. That's where we're going to end. Uh, mm-hmm. And we'll continue on this, uh, making a difference, particularly today, uh, the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. And thanks for joining us on the podcast. And uh, obviously you can like and subscribe and you'll automatically get the next podcast. You can follow it on YouTube. Yep. Um, it's on Spotify, Apple Music. You can go to the website. It's all there. Thank you, Kirkland Brand, for being our sponsors yes. of Himalaya Pink Salts. <laughs> Himalayan <laughs> Pink Salt. And I'm not sure why it's pink. I just hope it's natural. It's, it's, it's more saltier and better for It's supposed to be you. healthy. It's yeah. supposed to be. All right. Thanks for joining us. That's the cheapest thing they could find.